slave. The motherland has turned her back on us. Exiled to a wasted land. Brothers and sisters betrayed. Was the meek cling to power? Is it just? <laughs> to be the bulwark the world relies on? Does it make us weak? To witness endless loss? Falter. No. We are molded by it. Forged hot against an anvil of ice. Rage consumes us. From the fire, we rise again. So as we just witnessed, we have finally got some more Warhammer 3 news in the form of a new trailer that was made within the game's engine. We saw units from Kislev and Khorne, some legendary lords, and even a possible opposing faction leader to Katarin. I'm Colonel Damders, and welcome to my Warhammer 3 Trailer 2 Breakdown. Really quick before we get started, I just want to let you all know that at the same time that this video is out, there will also be a video on my early access experience of Warhammer 3 playing the brand new survival battle of Kislev vs Khorne. So if you'd like to get all the information that we know about right now, then be sure to head over and watch that video as soon as you finish this. Now, the fact that this trailer is in the game engine means that we have a pretty good idea of what the game is going to look like based on this. And if you ask me, it's going to be pretty incredible. Now, the trailer opens on a Kislev lady and her bear looking at the Aurora Borealis. Aurora Borealis. At this time of year, at this time of day, in this part of the country, localized entirely within... Warhammer 3. Yes. She has a bow, fur armor, and a brown bear by her side. Now, interestingly enough, brown bears, curiously, are said to be found in the north of the Empire, which is a little more south than your typical Kislevites. It could be that Kislev start in this campaign pushed from the north, or it could just be that they went down south and got some brown bears instead of all white bears for a little bit of variety. Next, we see what looks like a Kislev settlement or a Stanitsaz. We have a smaller force marching through. We've got some winged lancers at the front, some axe-wielding infantry, most likely some form of Kossars, and some bear cav bringing up the rear. Also, if this is a settlement and this is engine footage, we could be looking at a part of a new settlement battle, but it is far too early to tell. Plus, sure, this could be in the engine, but it doesn't mean it's on a gameplay map, so we definitely can't know for sure. Next, we cut to a close-up of this guy here, who the trailer is making it look like he's talking. He's reasonably old, scarred up, and looks to be a little bit blind. His eyes have kind of gone a bit glossed over and cataraxed. It does look awfully similar to a younger, buffer version of the advisor, but I don't really think it's him. Alternatively, this could be the Yuri that Katrin was writing her first letter to in the first trailer. This would most likely make him Yuri Kovalenko, who is a nomad from the Ungol tribe. He has served in the past under Katrin, so it would make sense that she has sent him off on a mission and would be sending him letters. There's also some other stuff later on that makes me feel like this is him, but I'll come to that when we get there. The motherland has turned her back on us. So from this, we can guess that this guy's feeling a little bit less enthusiastic towards the leadership of Kislev and is perhaps leading a rogue offshoot. 
In the next shot, we see our kids level lady walking with her bear past what looks to be the ruins of a town with a portal in the background. And we can only assume that leads to some sort of chaos realm. We can also see some frozen bodies in the bottom right of frame. So this battle may have taken place relatively recently. Or Kislev really is just that cold and nothing is feeding. Exile to a wasted land. The more this guy speaks, the more it seems like he may not have the best relationship with Kislev. The wasted land sounds a lot like wasteland and wasteland in the north is chaotic wasteland. So again, this might be one of our chaos adjacent faction leaders talking. If not chaos, then a sympathizer for sure. The next shot is a group of Kislevites enjoying a good old fashioned campfire song with a tent in the background. It could be a nomadic faction or perhaps a temporary war camp. Brothers and sisters betrayed. Now, I think this line here is just generally betraying family, but if you can think of any actual familial connections, then be sure to let me know in the comments. Our girl and her bear are now walking across a battlefield with many heavily armoured Kislev bodies laid on the ground. Interestingly, we see wooden spike barricades here, which are used to block enemy cavalry and have been seen as a deployable in Three Kingdoms, so this could be teasing the return of such features. We see a few more shots of the campfire, which now reveals our girl is one of those sat around drinking and telling spooky stories. Was the meek cling to power? Now he says this whilst the girl is on the screen, so it's possible that we're looking at someone in power here. We could be looking at an alternative female leader, either a lord or a hero, or just a general Kislevite. For the other potential Kislev leaders, we have Mishka, who is the Khan queen and ruler of the Gospodar tribe, which is a distant ancestor of Kislev. But timelines matter little in Total War Warhammer games, so it is possible. The only other significant female leader I could find was Catherine the Bloody, who is different to our Catherine. She was the Lamin vampire who transformed partway through her reign and was under the control of Queen Neferata, which interestingly is speculated to be coming to Warhammer either as a DLC or a pre-order bonus. So that'd be very nice to see. We then do a match cut from our girl to the bald man, which kind of shows them to be on the same level, so could be our opposing leaders or just opposite ends of this chaos corruption. Is it just... Now, as he says this, he looks down at his hands, which is very reminiscent of the way Macbeth looks at his hands, as all that he can see is the blood of those he killed, and this will make a lot more sense in just a minute. We then cut to a Chaos Champion looking towards this stun, it says. Now, if this is using in-game engine footage, then we could be looking at a settlement map here, and assuming you can stand where he is, we could be looking at 360 degree settlements. Now, if you look to the very top left, you can see some hills behind the buildings that could be more space of the map to stand on. This would definitely mean a 360 degree settlement. The walls are also much lower and more like you would see defending a smaller town such as this. There also look to be these watchtowers spread across the walls, which could be the town defences that I pray have a wider firing arc than the Warhammer 2 towers. Now, the main takeaway from all this, though, is that if this is in engine and if this is a gameplay map, we could be getting the settlements and siege rework we so desperately want. And then we get pranked and jump scared by some sort of corn demon, and I can't really tell what it is. Most likely one of the greater demons like a bloodthirster, or possibly even just an image of corn himself. We then cut back to our girl and she looks around to notice her bear has run off. I'm not sure exactly how he's done this since bears aren't exactly the most stealthy creatures to my knowledge, especially if it's moving fast. To be the bulwark the world relies on. Now this bulwark is in reference to the fact that Kislev is basically the barrier between the chaos and the mortal realms. They're the first line of defense keeping chaos at bay and without them, chaos would undoubtedly create a lot more havoc. Now we see another flash of corn imagery soaked in red. First we see what looks to be a younger version of this bald dude riding a horse and carrying human skulls. He's flanked by two warriors of corn that look to be holding dual axes. Then we see a very blurred image of what looks like a Kislev fighter being struck down by a heavily armored chaos warrior with an axe. And then finally we get a warrior of corn looking at camera with fire all around him looking like a badass. All this imagery is pointing towards our bald friend being consumed by chaos and joining them, which is confirmed right now. We cut back to him and he's looking down at his hands which are becoming pale and corrupted with veins spreading through them. Now I believe this confirms this character as Yuri Kovalenko and I will very happily eat my words if I'm wrong, but I'm happy to tell you why I believe this is the case. Now in one of his final battle victories, Yuri struck down a Chaos Champion that was on his last legs. After he died, Yuri spots a red jewel in his hand that seems to burn with inner fire. He steals this and tells no one. After this, he begins to grow darker in mood and more isolated from other men. This isolation is to hide his first chaotic mutation, which is, guess as anyone, a clawed and deformed hand, much like we are seeing the start of here. Once the mutation takes hold, he's already on his way to chaos and there isn't really any turning back. Now I know that instead of one hand turning into a claw, it's two hands turning a bit grey and weird, but nevertheless, I think that they will be taking some slight creative liberties in this case. And to show us two people here and neither of them have much significance to the story would be a little bit strange. Alternatively, this whole trailer could just be showing how chaos can corrupt even the most staunch of protectors. Here we can see that the Chaos Champion standing outside of the Stanitzers is being backed up by a load of Warriors of Cain, as well as some flying units, which we can see in the original artwork of Warhammer 3. 
After some extra research, I can tell you that these are Chaos Furies, which are quite like larger and more dangerous harpies. We should expect to see these in all of the Chaos factions, since they really just let anyone beat the boss of them. We then cut to Yuri, and I'm going to call him Yuri because I believe it and it makes it easier than calling him that bald guy, marching ahead of Warriors of Cain, holding his Chaos Champion helmet in his hand. He is for sure turned to Chaos, so he's either part of the Kislev campaign, or more excitingly, one of our legendary lords. But I'm not sure if he's our Cain Lord or just a Chaos adjacent faction, kind of like the current Warriors of Chaos or Norska. Little side note here, we see Yuri walking towards this large building and leaving footprints, but his warriors have no footprints, so did they just appear here, not leave footprints at all, or are they all inside Yuri's head? Interestingly enough though, we next see that the girl is investigating the prints left behind by her bear. Now we see this right after seeing Yuri's prints, so maybe she isn't following the bear as much as she is following Yuri. Do we falter? This line is really reinforcing that staunch protector mentality, but he seems to be warping it into his chaotic beliefs. You can even hear the warping in his voice as he says no. It becomes darker and more menacing. We then see him holding a torch, and the way that it's framed, he's lighting the bear in the background on fire. So we can assume that he's definitely going to be going against Kislev, but I don't think that was ever in any doubt. Also, once he throws a torch, we can see that his eyes are glowing red as well as some veins, reinforcing the fact that he has totally been corrupted by Cain, as it is literally flowing through him, just like the Emperor says. Let the heat flow through you. <laughs> we then see Bear Girl looking towards where the bear has run, and all we see is fire. Possibly the same fire that Yuri is lighting in this building, which I would assume is some sort of longhouse where the leader or Ataman of the Stanisar is living. She really is right on his tail if it's still burning. As we're going to find out, it may not be the exact same fire. We are molded by it. Now this is showing that the suffering hardens them rather than weakening them. Now this is mirrored in the way that corn warriors only become stronger the more death and suffering that they cause. Again, it's taking that Kislev mentality and twisting it for chaos. They are really just two sides of the same coin. We next cut to this massive battle scene with all sorts of units visible, so I'll try and do a speedrun of this. In the foreground we see some Chaos Warhounds like we have in the game now. I find these to be one of the best units in the early Chaos game, so I'm glad to see them coming back. Above them we have some corn cavalry like the Blood Crushers, which are blood letters riding massive juggernauts which are a mix of machine and beast, which make for devastating shock cavalry. Behind them we see more warriors of corn looking to be dual wielding axes, so they are most likely some heavy armour anti-infantry troops. We obviously see the Furies above them, although in this shot they look more like carrions. Here's hoping that they are stronger than that. We also have a lot of flaming swords wielded by Bloodletters, which are most likely a more spicy version of the regular Bloodletters from Trailer 1 with flaming weapons. Forged hot against an anvil of ice. Now the voice is becoming more and more distorted and corrupted as Khan is taking hold of him. Now obviously this line is talking about the toughness of the Kislev people, both from the constant battle, but also the fight with the hostile environment they call home. And again, this is just exactly mirrored in the way that Khan's warriors are. They are nurtured and made hard by fighting it again and again against the wall of ice that is Kislev. We then see Bear Girl running through a flaming forest following this trail of destruction. We then cut to Bear Calf also running, and don't they just look great? Funnily enough, they are again brown bears in this shot, so either white bears are an entity variation or a different unit altogether. But either way, very nice to see. The wielding spears on top of some added charge bonus, but bears ain't that fast, so most likely these will be your stick them in and leave them cavalry. We actually see a couple more units in this sequence, and one thing I love is the little ice crystal details in all the units, which just look great, and also is teasing us with the ice magic we all want to see now that we know Katrin has it from Trailer 1. We see some cavalry with heavy armour and two wings, not actual wings obviously. These are most likely to be the Griffin Legion, which is the most elite of the Kislev cavalry, and will be another shock cav unit. Really gonna need to brush up on my micro. We also see what looks to be an ice tiger, it's basically a small breed of saber tooth tiger and I couldn't really find out much about them, but from this it looks like a single entity, which would be cool, though it looks a little small to be a single entity unit. Consumes us. Now this line sounds a lot like some corn heresy to me, which is definitely confirmed because you can just hear the corruption oozing out of his voice. We then get a massive zoomed out shot of a huge battle between Chaos and Kislev, and get out your binoculars because we're going to do some unit spotting. Starting with Kislev on the right, we have the Bear Cab, of course, being backed up by Axe Corsairs, or Kremlin Guard, depending on how elite they are. And behind them are Bow Corsairs, most likely. We also have a number of units that look to be some sort of great swords from the way they are wielding their weapons. Behind them, we have some Sword and Shield infantry, most likely some more Corsairs or something more elite. And all the way in the back, we have some Winged Lancers or Griffin Legion. It's too far to tell. We also get a few close-ups after this wide shot, so in one of them, we get a better look at the Axe infantry, and it's very blurry, but looking at their weapons, they look a little gun-shaped on the handle end. This could be the Streltsy, which use a combination of Black Powder and Halberds to attack from range and up close. Now over on the corn side, we have the Warhounds at the front, of course, and the Furies overhead. 
Behind them, we have a lot of infantry holding flaming weapons. Some of these could be the bloodletters we saw earlier, but some look to be holding halberds or great weapons, so this could be a variant of the Warriors of Khan. Speaking of which, the infantry at the front looks to have a weapon and shield, making them another variant. We of course see more Bloodcrusher cavalry, and then it descends into a blurry mess. In another shot, we see a number of cannons firing from the Khan side. These could be the Skull Cannons of Khan, or Hellforged Bellowers, which have massive demonic engines. Basically a very powerful war machine, as they can move across the battlefield and run over enemies with ease, whilst also unleashing hellish shots from the cannon. We then see our lad completely taken over with corruption in his eyes, veins, scars, and also it's kind of given away by the fact that he's burning down a Kislev settlement. The flag in the background could be a specific Kislev faction, be sure to let me know if you have any ideas about this, or it could simply be just a general Kislev flag. Then cut back to the battle, and it's quite hard to see here, but the infantry fighting chaos is the same we saw outside of Katarin's tent, which would make them the Ice Guard, which are elite warrior women that use bows and blades infused with ice magic. We also get a little close-up of these later, and you can even see the glow of the weapons. You also get a few more glamour shots of the Warriors of Khorne with the halberds. We also get the Blood Rush Cavalry in even more detail, and the final shots of this battle show the most exciting units in the trailer. The big ass bear that looks like it's being summoned by Katarin, so it's most likely some form of ice bear. Now there is a race of ice bears, but they are just kind of big bears that have white fur. This is a beast held together with magic, forged from ice and earth itself. You can even see this in the roots and cracks in its surface. And on the chaos side, we see the bloodletter in all its glory, landing with a thud and wielding an axe and a whip. Now, could this actually be a flying unit since it lands like this? Because if so, yes please, that sounds extremely strong. <laughs> And of course, we get the two classic corn mottos. We always love to hear blood for the blood god and then the little whisper after skulls for the skull throne. Beautiful. And just before we cut to black, we see the bear and the blood letter about to clash and I cannot wait to see them on the battlefield, especially if they have that unique battling animation. Now again, for my massive in-game engine speculation, we see in the background that this battle is all taking place outside of a settlement. So if so, then these maps will be huge to fit a whole army outside, but again, it could just be pre-rendered and assets moved around, so I'm not going to go too deep into that. Now, the final shots of this trailer, we have our girl and her bear finding the wasteland created by Chaos. And from the looks of things, the Chaos Realm is being brought into our realm, judging by the corn-looking architecture and even a little cameo from the lad himself. Lord knows if this means they'll be merging the two worlds as Chaos and cleaning them as Kislev, but I've never been more excited. Thank you so very much for watching this video breakdown of the newest gameplay trailer for Warhammer 3. I do hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to subscribe if you want to see more content like this. I have a bunch of Warhammer 3 videos coming very, very soon. Massive thank you to all supporters of the channel, in particular Kobe said so and Nifty Norm. You guys absolutely smashing out of the park as per usual. One more thank you to everybody for watching and for now, I've been Colonel Damders. And I will see you next turn.